so now we're at step six. Um, right here, you see on my screen that we don't have a step six because I'll be doing it here on the fly. And then once I do it, I'll, that's when I'll document it. So um, we're going to be sending data from the ESP32 to the app. So just let me draw this out real quick for you. Here we have our ESP32 at ESP. And then here we have our at app. So the ESP is going to have some data from a sensor, like, uh, I don't know, let's say temperature. Temperature, like 32 degrees Celsius. And then this data is going to be sent over to our app. And then the app is going to display it. And this is going to be end to end encrypted. So let's start by programming the app. And the reason why we're starting with the app is because um, the way the ESP SDK is uh, programmed right now, the app has to send an initial, an initial like kind of handshake, I guess. And it needs to be the first one to send the data in the transaction. And only after it's done that once, like ever between at signs, if you've done it between the two at signs once, you don't have to do it again. Then that's when the ESP32 can start sending data. And it has to do stuff with um, cryptographic keys. So let's um, and this isn't a usual limitation of the app platform, it's just um, for now. So I'm going to go ahead and open VS Code, and we're going to make a Java app. So I'm going to open a folder, I'm going to call this UMass Java Demo, like so. Um, then I'm going to create a Maven project, because um, our Java SDK supports Maven, so that's what makes life easy. Um, I guess I'm going a little bit too fast. What I just did there is I opened the command palette using Control Shift P and then or Command Shift P if you're on Mac. I have the Maven extension, so I went over here to extension, search up Maven. Um, Maven for Java is good, or you can get the entire extension pack, which is what I recommend. Whoops. So once you have that, you can open the command palette with Command Shift P or Control Shift P, search up Create Maven Project. I'm going to go over to Quick Start, and you're just going to use the default um, values here. Then you're going to create the project. And then here in the terminal, it's going to ask us for some values like the version or the artifact ID. Um, in that case, I'll just spam enter to use the, whatever default values it gives us. And then it's going to give us the option to open. And, that's, and there you go. We have our Maven project going. <clears throat> Um, as soon as you get into this Maven project, you're going to go over to palm.xml. You're going to change this 1.7 to 1.8 on line 17 and 18. Or if it's, it might not be on these exact lines, but make sure the Maven compiler source and Maven compiler source target are both 1.8. Then for dependency, you're going to type in dependency here. For the group ID, if I remember from the top of my head, it's going to be io.github. at sign dash foundation. And then the artifact ID will be at underscore client. Um, you should press always to this, um, and we get, and the version is missing, so we're going to put in a version, and I don't remember what the version is from the top of my head. Uh, let's try this. L let me, let me check, just to make sure. It's 1.0 snapshot. Um, to make sure that we've got the dependency going correctly, you should see this Maven tab here in your Explorer. If you don't see this, let me try and hide it. If you don't see this, go over to the dots up here and click Maven. Um, and then if you go over here to our Maven project called Demo, go to Dependencies, click Refresh. We should see that uh, we have here io.github.assignfoundation at client snapshot. And you should see a bunch of uh, more libraries under that as well. So yeah, once you see that, we've got our dependency going just swell. So let's go ahead and open the app. Um, uh, before we go into the app, actually, let's go over here to our Explorer, create a new folder, call it keys. And this is where we're going to put our keys to our at sign. So here, uh, we made our ESP32 the at IC761 at sign. So for our app, we're going to make this make it the other at sign at driving 433. 
All right. Um, now we're going to type in at client. We're going to make our at client object using the factory methods with dot with remote secondary. There we go. And then you pass in root.atsign.org64, which is our root URL. Then for the at sign, let's create an at sign object at the top. I'm going to name this at sign Java because that's what the our Java app is. And it's going to be at driving 433, which is what I just uploaded. We're going to make another at sign object, name it ESP32. And it's going to be IC761, which is what we have on our ESP32. So since at client is our Java app, we're going to pass in the Java at sign here. Then for verbose, let's just pass in false for now. Um, you can see here we get an error because we haven't handled an exception. So I'm just going to put throws exception here at the main uh, method header so that we can just throw it and let somebody else handle the exception. Um, now, now that we have at client going, let's uh, go ahead and make something called an at key. So remember in at servers, it's kind of like a key value database, but instead of key values, we have at keys and at values. So here I'm gonna, and like at keys are a little bit more than just like a string. It's, that's why we have objects uh, defining the keys in the, at, uh, in the at servers, because there's a little bit more to define. And you also have to follow a certain structure. So here I'm gonna, create, instead of an at key, we're going to create a shared key. So this this shared key actually extends at key. So it is an at key, um, but it's a special kind of at key. And the reason why it's special is because this is how we send data to other at signs. It's an at key because you can have at keys for yourself. You can have public at keys for anyone, or you can have at keys that are shared with a specific at sign, which is what we want here. So I'm going to name this shared key is equal to, we're going to use key builders dot shared key builder, where we pass in the shared by at sign. The shared by at sign is the creator of the at key. So in this case, we want the Java, the Java app to create a key that is shared with ESP32. So here you pass in the shared with at sign as well, which is our ESP32 object here we made in the top. Then you have to give the key a name using dot key. So we're going to name this initialization because we're, um, for this first part, we're going to send the first initial data to like um, start the data transaction for any future data sent. And then we're going to call the dot build to create this object. Now, um, let's just say our value is going to be hello there. Now let's send the data. So we're going to say at client dot put, and we're going to use this method here put a shared key and a string value. So, and then we just pass in shared key and value. Um, so what put does is it returns a completable future. And if you ever worked with async await or futures in Dart, like async await in JavaScript, or I guess they're called promises, that's kind of like what they are in Java. So I don't want to continue code until I finish this. So I'm going to call dot get. And it's going to return a string. Um, I'll just name this return ret, and I'm going to print that out. So let's go ahead and run this. There you go. We get a data six. Data The six here is the commit ID. So every time you, if I run this again, I should get a data seven. And this has to do stuff with um, synchronization. Uh, between at servers, um, online at servers and offline at servers. So your device can run an offline at server so that it'll run faster. But and, and then once it reconnects to the internet, it can synchronize with the remote at server. So that's what these commit IDs are here for. So yeah, we sent the initial initial handshake, I guess is what we'll call it. So we can go ahead and comment out this code and never use it again. Um, and by use it again, I mean we don't have to run it ever again. So I'm just going to copy this so we can <clears throat> send some actual data. So I'm going to use the same shared key. Um, but instead, since the ESP32 is sending us data, I'm going to make the shared by the ESP32 and make the shared with the Java at sign. So there's a little bit, um, a little bit to absorb here. 
So remember, when we're making an, an at key, the shared by at sign is the creator of the at key. And since the ESP32 is sending us the data, that means the ESP32 is creating the at key. So that, that's why the shared by at sign is our ESP32, and the data is shared with us, since the ESP32 is sending data to us, the Java app. Um, I'm going to plan to have the ESP32 send us a key named test. And then we're going to say string value is equal to at client dot get shared key. And we're going to say dot get. All right. Um, and we can't run this code just yet because we need to program the ESP32 first. So let's go back to our ESP32. We're going to write some C++. So I'm going to say const auto at keys equal to new at key. Um, and then I don't remember exactly what I have to do here. Oh, I remember now. So first we need to make our other at sign. So I'm going to name this Java is equal to at driving 433. <clears throat> and I guess I can rename this to ESP32 as well, just to keep things consistent. Um, this at key, the shared by at sign is us, the ESP32, and it's shared with the Java app. Oops, uh, first I have to pass in a key name, which I've already planned that it would be called test. And there you go, we've created our at key object. So this the key name is test, shared by creator is the ESP32, and the shared with is the Java app, which is, I'll, I'll put in the at signs as well. IC761, there we go. Um, I'll. I'll make this a little bit more neater as well. <clears throat> this test shared by is the ESP32 and our shared with is the Java. Okay, now we made our at key. Now we can send some data. So let's make a, a, a value variable here. Let's just make it a string that says, hello world. I like lemonade. Then we can say at client. We're going to run this put at key method here. We're going to pass in the at key and the value. And it's because we need to access the data. So because we made a pointer instead of a, an actual value. OK, now let's go ahead and upload this. So I'm going to hold down the boot button. I'm going to tap the reset button. It's going to say waiting for download. And now I'm with my other hand, I'm going to press upload and monitor all while holding down the boot button. And once I see that it's writing some addresses, addresses, um, then I can relax. All right, there you go. Now I've let go of the ESP32. Gonna let that upload for a bit. All right, now it's gonna do the PCAP authentication shenanigans we did in the last video. <clears throat> then we should see it encrypting the data with um, there we go. You should get a response of a number, which is the commit ID, just like I explained before. <clears throat> and that's how we send the data from the ESP32 to our Java app. And now let's go back to our Java app and let's print out this value here. And we should get, hello world, I like lemonade. And we get an error because... All right. Um, I had to make a cut real quick because of that nasty error, but uh, I was able to figure out why I was getting that error, and it has to do something with um, the value you pass into here. So for now, um, it, it's probably some edge case somewhere in the ESP32 SDK, but for now, uh, for your values, go a little bit simple. So like you can pass in a number, you can pass in hello world, but for some reason it doesn't like hello world, I like lemonade. I guess it just doesn't like lemonade. So here we'll pass in hello world, and then let's go ahead and run this, upload and monitor, put into download mode. Then now it'll upload the code. 
we'll run this alongside of our Java program here. Um, by the way, the Java code hasn't changed at all, I don't think. So yeah, we'll just give this a second. All right, now it's sent the data. So now we can receive it here on the Java end. And we should get the value that we sent here. And this is all NSEN encrypted. Um, all right, there we go. Um, you might see all this other stuff here beforehand because I changed verbose to true. So we can just change this back to false. Um, and then you won't see all these annoying commands pop up on your screen. And here we get the same message, hello world. So there you go. Um, uh, that's how you do end-to-end -end encryption uh, from an ESP32 sending data to a Java app here I'm running on my computer.